Hello, and welcome to Deciphering CAPTCHA. My name is Michael Brooks, and in this talk, I'll be discussing how two of my automated CAPTCHA solvers work. These two attacks have been identified by CVE 2008-2020 and CVE 2008-2019. The name of this talk is Deciphering CAPTCHA, but I do not consider CAPTCHA to be a cryptographic primitive. Although there are similarities between the two, I'm using the word decipher as to make out the meaning of despite the indistinctness or obscurity. My biggest motivation for giving this talk is in reaction to how poorly documented CAPTCHA solvers are. I could think of no other widely used security system with so much misinformation associated with it. One of the, one of the effects of this misinformation is the widespread use of weak CAPTCHAs on the internet today. Before making my research public, I could only find a single CVE that was actually solving a Turing test. This is CVE 2007-3308. Instead, the clear majority of CVEs against CAPTCHA have been taking advantage of implementation. The first CAPTCHA we'll be looking at is CVE 2008-2020. This CAPTCHA is the one used by uh, PHP Nuke. Uh, if you want, uh, you can go to phpnuke.org and see it. They're still vulnerable to this day even though I reported this flaw back in April. Um, computers are great at performing a lot, uh, lots of permutations, and they're only going to... Computers are great at performing lots of permutations, and they're only getting better at it. The number of the possible permutations for this CAPTCHA is 10 to the 6th, which is, actually, is exactly 1 million. As an attacker, we want to inverse the CAPTCHA function. To do this, we must utilize the, the very code used to build the CAPTCHA to build a lookup table of all possible corresponding outputs. The input to this CAPTCHA is the answer, and the output is the challenge image. Instead of storing the entire image outputted from the CAPTCHA function, I'm storing just the message digest. This, using this method, I'm able to use less disk space for building a very large lookup table. And also, lookup time is, is, uh, is considerably less for storing the entire image. The ability to use MD5 allows me to use rainbow crack. But this is key. You can't use rainbow crack on, uh, on breaking all CAPTCHAs, only this specific CAPTCHA, because it is a one-to-one -one function in the mathematical sense of the word. If you start introducing more randomized data to the CAPTCHA, the, it no longer becomes a function. And that, one answer, one uh, will have many uh, challenge images uh, relating to it. Um, however, even though you're adding randomized data, no matter how much randomized data you're adding to this CAPTCHA, it can still be reversed. You can iterate through all of the random call functions, uh, producing every possible combination. In fact, the phrase completely automated Turing test to tell computers and humans apart is a logic error. If you have code to, believe that, to, to build a completely automated test, then you can use that code to uh, build a table of all possible solutions. Uh, the, now, this is a laborious process. However, it doesn't require much technical ability. Um, uh, now, in the case where you don't have the source code, um, in fact, uh, paypal.com, right now, if you go to sign up for a PayPal account, they're using a very similar CAPTCHA. It doesn't contain randomized data other than the, um, than the, than the actual message. Unfortunately, I'm unable to show it to you. But using a CAPTCHA like this, uh, the, the, possible, the largest number of um, calculations is uh, 36 to the 5, which is 60,466,176 possible combinations. Now, it took many man hours to complete this. Uh, but in, but the PayPal suffer for, suffers from another issue. By refreshing the login page, you can, uh, it'll, a new capture will be given. So by building a smaller table, you can, uh, you can still break, uh, break them by um, asking for another challenge, another capture challenge. In summation, every open source capture is vulnerable, is vulnerable to a permutation attack. Permutation attack against CAPTCHAs are, are recognized by my CVE 2008-2020. To protect my company, I had to implement reCAPTCHA, uh, reCAPTCHA.net, which is a free service. It's a closed source CAPTCHA that is developed by Louis Von Ahn, who conducts very productive, uh, provocative research. A large number of man hours are wasted at solving CAPTCHAs each year. 
reCAPTCHA harnesses the power of human computation to digitize books, which betters all of humanity. I feel privileged to live in a time where uh, organized book burning, such that of the Nazis and extremist religious groups, can no longer cause harm. The next CAPTCHA is more interesting. Uh, CAPTCHA attack is more interesting. The attack is uh, much more complex. Uh, this attack is 2008-2019. Uh, it is an audio CAPTCHA built for the Simple Machines Forum. A CAPTCHA solver was created for an earlier version of this CAPTCHA, and it is uh, identified by CVE 2008-3308, which is the only other CVE regarding uh, CAPTCHAs. To address this security issue, Simple Machines Forum developers added noise to the audio file. Two major components uh, to decipher the signal, uh, or uh, I use two major components uh, in order to decipher the signal despite the noise. The first component is a hamming distance. Uh, this is named after Bell researchers, uh, the uh, Bell Labs researcher Richard Hamming. Hamming distance was introduced in the fundamental paper entitled Error, De Error Detecting and Error Correcting Codes in 1950. A hamming distance measures the noise between two signals that should otherwise be identical. Hamming weight analysis of bits is used in several disciplines, including information theory, cryptography, bioinformatics, and genetics. It is, used, it is the fundamental algorithm used to compare fingerprints uh, and iris scanners in, uh, for authentication. It is also used in uh, optical character recognition software like Tesseract. I obtained, the, uh, I obtained the Hamming distance function implemented in PHP from the open source project PHP for Bioinformatics. This project is performing Hamming distance calculations on sequences of DNA. The other component in this capture attack is fuzzy logic, which is a tool used in artificial intelligence. In short, fuzzy logic is a range of truth between zero and one. Fuzzy logic is being used uh, today in places such as washing machines to tell you how dirty your laundry is, and in dryers to tell you how, how dry it is. Using these two elements together alone, just by performing a uh, Hamming distance calculation on, on the very beginning of the file, I was able to find the first letter. At this point, I was absolutely ecstatic. I was jumping up and down. And I'd, I'd broken. I'd broken a capture using, using these systems. It was only the first letter. In order to find the other letters, uh, I, it, it was proving to be more difficult. Um, the ability to find uh, the spaces between letters w was difficult. Um, you, it was, uh, um, there, were, there are methods, but it was very heavy, uh, very heavy calculations. Um, I did find, however, a problem with the CAPTCHA. After each letter, there is 5,600 uh, uh, 5, bytes uh, minimum space between each letter. So after finding the first letter, I would skip ahead 5,600 bytes. Um, then, I, uh, oh, well, there, there's a, there is a, um, a, a problem with Hamming distances, or at least it's an uh, implementation issue. Uh, well, uh, in order to perform a Hamming distance calculation, both strings must be of the exact same size. So you, in order to identify a letter, I must know exactly where it, where it is, where, where it starts, and uh, even where it ends. <laughs> the solution I, I came was to run a whole lot of Hamming distance calculations. I'm running literally thousands of, uh, thousands of them. Around, uh, uh, in order to solve about one CAPTCHA, it takes about uh, 14,000 Hamming distance calculations. Luckily, these are uh, very cheap, very cheap calculations. There, there, is, uh, there are other tools for performing uh, fuzzy, um, fuzzy comparisons on strings, and one of them is called the Livingston distance, and it doesn't suffer from the same shortcomings as Hamming. Uh, you can perform Livingston distance calculations on two strings of different size, sizes. It's able to identify um, uh, uh, Com uh, comparisons despite transpositions of data, or m moving data around, or injections of large da uh, of data. Uh, unfortunately, living uh, distance calculations are extremely heavy. Performing a calculation on only a few kilobytes of data will require gigabytes of memory. 
Living stream distances are being used in audio processing. As an example, there is U.S. patent 6073099, entitled Predicting Auditory Confusions Using Weighted Living Stream Distances. The great Alan Turing is the creator of the Turing test, and, when, and where CAPTCHA gets its name. Turing himself believed this test would, no, would eventually become obsolete. In 30 years, it would be easy to ask. It, uh, it would be as easy to ask a computer the question. No, okay. <coughs> excuse me. In 30 years, it will be as easy to ask a computer a question as to ask a person. This is Alan Turing in 1946. <laughs> well, clearly, um, th that is not the case. However, I believe that uh, this eventually will happen. That um, the captures will. Uh, eventually become obsolete. Many talks, uh, attacks on software are becoming obsolete, and so are defenses. Information security is an ever-changing landscape, and I don't believe it will ever come to an end. After 3.5 billion years of evolution, organisms have become incredibly adept at defending themselves from viral attack. Even with the incredible capability of the human immune system, we still suffer from many methods of code execution. These virons are in the room, pumping through your bloodstream as I speak. New methods of attacking software are developed constantly. Software that was once believed to be secure can in fact be extremely vulnerable to new attacks. For instance, the format string vulnerability was discovered less than a decade ago, and more recently, the dangling pointer attack presented at Black Hat only last year. Programmers are human, and we must make assumptions about how our code will be used. We cannot foresee every condition that our code will encounter. I enjoy that journey into the unknown and the fruits of my labor of love. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, <laughs> uh, my, my talk would have ran a bit longer uh, due to my presentation materials. I'll try and uh, get them working, or the, the visuals. Um, I'll try and get that working. Uh, the code I have for both of these captures are available on my website. Yeah, and I, uh, the exploit code is available for both of these. I encourage you to download them. Uh, particularly, uh, the code is not very complex. I think you'll be surprised on uh, how simple it took to, to break some of these systems. Um, I think that's a sign of elegance. Uh, I encourage more research in the area of captures and people to be open. Uh, I find it unfortunate that uh, many people keep these, uh, these methods secretive and that um, they're, yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, uh, my materials are on uh, my website, uh, rooksecurity.com. Um, I'll have updated materials as well. Uh, oh, exploit code is also available on the DEF CON CD um, for both of these attacks. Um, you can see it in action. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. I I, I do apologize. Um, all right. This is uh this is the the PHP new capture. As you can see, uh, <laughs> Very simple, right? Very simple. I can't but you would be surprised. The the CVE for this capture, people using this capture was over a, a half a dozen software packages and there are more. This this is ah oh. oh. <laughs> wait, wait a bit. Hold on. Now to go on to build up the lookup table I start I start iterating. I start at zero zero zero. Uh in the in the far column you see uh that, that is the MD five hash of the of the actual image. I continue on from zero 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 all the way to nine nine nine. Um it's very sim simple. Uh <laughs> backwards. All right. Uh, this is actually a one-to-one -one function, similar to f of x equals uh, x to the 3. Uh, for every one input of, uh, of the answer, there is exactly one output. Um, now, so when the function is inverse, it is still a function. It is uh, f of x to the, uh, to the, to the well, one-third. Anyway, uh, which is shown by the, uh, by the graph. Now, if you, uh, if you inverse a... Uh, um, a non-one-to-one function, it, becomes, it no longer becomes a function in terms of um, 
uh, for one value of x, there are now, uh, or for, yeah, for one value of x, there are now two values of y. Um, so uh, Rainbow Crack is able to uh, is able to break specifically this capture because of its uh, because of its one to one nature. Um, okay, this is the audio capture. Uh, the first, th this is one of the main slides I wanted to show you. Okay. The picture you see at the top is the raw audio file being put together. This is uh, without the noise. Uh, it runs through a noise sub subroutine uh, as the patch, and you see at the bottom. Uh, actually, picking out, I mean, at the, at the top slide, picking out that black space is pretty easy. I mean, you can do it with a string compare. But doing it, uh, um, it becomes uh, more difficult later on. Uh, not only not only are the black spaces uh, changed, but also the, the wave file, um, each letter themselves are changed. And we can measure this change using a Hamming distance. Um, and I can show you the exploit right here. Um, <laughs> OK. Um, it, it, it looks like it looks, it's very simple. Basically, I, I just uh, upload the dot .wav file. Or at least the interface is very simple. It's a PHP file. Um, I upload the .wav file produced from the from the image. Attack. Attack. It'll take a while. Um, this is on a different system. On my uh, on my personal machine, I have like a, a, a dual core, 2.4 gigahertz. It'll take around uh, about 14 seconds or so to to, uh, to break it. Um, the server that I'm using right now isn't isn't as beefy. Um, but here, uh, oh. But out of order. This is the capture using on PayPal sign-up site right now. <laughs> what are you doing? Why? Why are you doing that, PayPal? Like, it, it is disconcerting to me that a financial uh, institution would be using such a weak capture. Um, I, and then also phpnuke.org. Here's uh, phpnuke.org. It has been downloaded by, um, it says 8.35 million downloads. And look, and if you see the, the, the capture in the corner, security code, uh, they're still using, my, and this, was, this uh, exploit code has been available since April, uh, yet they have not patched. I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can't explain that one. Anyway, um, okay, so in this talk, um, um, a total of uh, a total of 5,527 Hamming distances were used in this attack. Um, and I, here, I'll pull up the code. I don't know how many of you are programmers, but um, I like the code. Uh, in essence, <laughs> I don't know. Two minutes, two minutes left. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, if you see the code, I start by uh, loading all of the um, all of the clean letters into the into um, into memory, uh, and then I began. Uh, on this line here. I know that I'm searching for five letters, and that's what I'm saying right here. I'm looking for, uh, after finding five characters, I, I would like to, uh, I'd like to um, stop. I know I've reached the end. Uh, here I'm performing, uh, on this line over here, I'm performing the Hamming distance. Uh, with, I, I found a way to uh, save resources by actually not performing a Hamming distance on the entire letter, but only uh, the um, first, uh, first three characters. In this case, the first 512 bytes of, of, the, of the file. Um, here, um, Hamming distance. Hamming distance is actually a, a fairly simple calculation. Um, here, uh, I'll show you. This is a Hamming distance shown on um, just regular words. For instance, the Hamming distance between toned and roses is three, where uh, three characters are, are different. And then, uh, again, the Hamming distance shown between uh, t two sequences of binary. Um, um, so. 
how the captcha. Oh, this is uh, uh, another thing. If you're if you're to use this, uh, a similar attack on another uh, on another captcha, you must make sure that you're comparing the uh, the raw pulse code modulation. Uh, what this means is that uh, I. Uh, the capture they're giving to me is a wave, so it is a raw stream of uh, uh, a digital representation of this uh, analog of, of, of this analog wave. Uh, if you have taken calculus, uh, this looks very similar to a uh, an integral. Uh, now, uh, um, so okay, so if if you were to give a, uh, get a challenge response in an, an MP3, for instance, you would have to change it to a dot wave before uh, before uh, performing it. Uh, anyway, my time is done. I, uh, I I wish the best. I hope I hope that there will be more research in the area of captures and people will be open with their research. Thank you very much.